What's going on everybody? It's Joe here with Deranged. So I've had the Talon for a little over a year now and I've kind of settled in on a few things that I love about it and a few things that I definitely do not love about it. So in today's video we're going to run through three things that I absolutely love and three things that I absolutely do not love and hope they change on the next go round. So with that said, let's, uh, let's get out on the trail here and jump into it. So in case you're curious, I am out here on the Montana Mountain Loop Trail out in Arizona. Just wanted to uh, get out and get on a ride by myself. I could have done this uh, video at my house or anywhere else, but it's been too long since I've had some seat time, some wheel time, so I just wanted to get out and, uh, and go for a ride. And uh, we've had a ton of rain here recently. I wanted to see what some of the storm damage looked like and everything else. So, so far, nothing crazy. I came up a river, figured out that butterfly season is now. They all hatched and there's butterflies flipping everywhere. Also, there's bugs here too. So found out both of those. Okay, I'm gonna start off with the first thing that I love about my talent. So I've had a Razor before. We have a Pro XP right now as well. Been in Garrett's uh, KRX, Dave's machine, all kinds of machines. Um, and the one thing I love about the Talon that you don't get in those other machines is the ability to shift down and have a quieter cab. So I take my family out often, right? Well, as often as they'll let me anyway, and even when I don't have passengers in the back, but there's times when you're cruising down that fire road and you're doing 40, 50 miles an hour and you're at seven, 8,000 RPMs and your cab noise and the noise inside your rig is just super loud. Um, you gotta have ear protection or the music up super loud in order to hear it. With the Talon, you have the ability to shift up and put it in sixth gear, shift up. Yeah, shift up, put it in sixth gear and you lower your RPMs and you could be cruising along it shoot, I don't know, probably 40 miles an hour or so, and only be at 4,000 RPMs, uh, which allows you to have a quieter cab on the inside, allows you to have some, uh, you know, the ability to have a conversation without screaming at each other at the top of your lungs. You're not going to communicate just talking, right? You're not going to be able to do that, but, uh, you know, it won't be damaging your ears. You won't be uh, having to scream at your kids in the back seat. So the first thing that I love about the Talon is the ability to shift down and use the uh, the gears to quiet down the cab, basically. Okay, so that's one of the biggest benefits of the DCT, but another benefit that I like about the DCT and one thing I love about the Honda Talon, and I'll kind of count this as uh, a part 1A of it, is the ability to tap through the gears. Shift down when I want to shift down, shift up when I want to shift up, you don't get that in other rigs and in the Honda Talon, you have the opportunity to shift down when you're coming out of a corner, shift up when you want to quiet down, hold in gear as long as you want to hold in gear, uh, all that kind of stuff. And you don't get that on other rigs and I really do enjoy that aspect of the Talon. Honda, your airbox, it might be the perfectly engineered airbox. It sucks and not in a good way. Uh, accessing it, a pain. I shouldn't have to remove a panel, then remove 11 clips, then remove eight bolts to change my air filter, especially when you put the air intake up in here in the wheel well of the tire. Uh, I don't know where you tested the rig when you were going through the process, whatever, of the airbox design, but it wasn't anywhere that there was dust. Uh, or you didn't take into consideration the uh, amount of times your customers would have to uh, change their air filter. Simple, simple solution. Run it here. I hate to say like Polaris, but run it there like Polaris. Throw th some frog skin on there, get some clean air going to it so we don't, we're not changing filters every seven and a half seconds. It's not that bad. People tend to over-exaggerate how often they have to change their filters. 
uh, but it could be a hundred percent better and accessing it is just straight a pain in the butt. I hope you can hear me on this one. Uh, this is the next thing that I'm not a big fan about on the Honda Talon. And that is the doors. The doors, no matter what I do, seem to rattle. They just feel low quality and less than I would expect from Honda. Uh, you have to basically slam them to keep them from rattling. Uh, if you're able to keep them from rattling and when you do slam them they don't they don't feel like a good quality door they feel like you're slamming a garbage door so next thing I'm not a huge fan on is the Honda Talon doors right I think they could do a much better job one of the rigs couple things Dave's Can-Am his uh, Maverick Sport doors on it awesome they are high quality feeling when you shut them they have a seal around them so you feel like you're getting a good seal and they seal some of the dust and water and stuff like that out feel real solid when you close them much better quality door than you get in the Honda Talon so that's the second thing I'm not a huge fan about about the Honda Talon after a, after a year of ownership you know it's funny I'll slow down for this or stop for this. I'll be pulling to the shade here. It's funny in the first, see what I mean about the door? I'm just, I'm parked here. Apparently that one didn't get slammed hard enough the last time. So let me turn the motor off, uh, engine off. Anyway, in the first year or so of ownership, especially the first six months, there's the honeymoon phase, right? Where you kind of look past the uh, bad things or the things that you aren't super happy about on your machine. Sometimes it takes a little while for that uh, honeymoon period to wear off. Um, I feel like I'm there with the talent. I see its faults. Uh, I know its strengths as well. Um, so I feel like I'm there and can kind of give you a real thorough, I guess, solid opinion on it after owning it for a year. So. Um, maybe I look past the doors in the beginning, but they are just not high quality feeling, right? You got to slam it and when you slam it, everything else kind of, it doesn't, I don't know, it just doesn't sound good. Not to mention, I mean, I have the Honda Talon lower doors on and you can see down there, I've got a, an air gap. Um, the lo lower doors could have been done better. Honestly, I think a lot of the uh, aftermarket ones are probably a better option than the than the standard Honda ones. Even though the Honda ones do kind of look better from the outside than most, um, all in all, I think the other ones are probably a better option. Um, you can see the gaps I still get there. No seals or anything. Um, so that's, that's number two of the things I'm not a huge fan of on the, uh, the Honda Talon. This is as good a spot as any after the steamboat or steam bath I just took to talk about the next or third thing that I'm not a huge fan of on the Talon. And that is there are so many holes, so many more holes than there should be for what you're getting, I guess you'd say. I'll run uh, kind of some B-roll of driving, but I don't want to look down to my right and see the road I'm traveling on through the uh, gear shift area. I don't want to see that. Um, I also don't want the steam that comes up as water hits the uh, pipes from the radiator to the back. I don't want to. I don't want to experience the steam bath that you get there. Uh, I don't want to see the dust coming up through. 
there's mods you can do and all that kind of stuff. You can add a CJ boot to it to uh, eliminate that dust and that steam from coming up. I shouldn't have to do that. That should be something that comes from Honda. It's a pretty simple deal. Next is the door gaps, right? This is your standard in stock door gap on your Honda Talon. Same thing right here with the back. Now I understand it is probably for airflow or some other reason. Um, find it uh, less than necessary, I guess you'd say, given that other manufacturers don't have to do the same thing to get good airflow through their machine. One thing I won't uh, comment or bring up, I guess, well, I'm bringing it up anyway, but one thing I won't uh, criticize them on is the dust in the cab. Uh, the reason why is because the moment that you add these um, or the aftermarket version, the door panels, that uh, the lower doors basically that fill in that hole there, you kind of, um, you're losing uh, the original design and therefore changing what uh, was expected of the machine when it left the manufacturer basically, as far as dust coming in and all that kind of stuff. Um, so dust isn't an issue, probably. Um, it's not a top, top deal for me, especially since I have door panels, I have a front windshield, you know, I understand I've modified my machine or whatever. So that is the third thing that I'm not a huge fan of on the Talon. Let's talk about the second thing that I love about the Honda Talon and that is live valve suspension. You hear a lot of talk on the Facebook groups and on the internet and whatnot about whether or not the live valve is worth it. Uh, whether or not the extra money you spend on the live valve is worth the difference that you get. Is the juice worth the squeeze basically? And in my opinion, yes but not for reasons that you're probably thinking. So a lot of people think that, yes, I can just go to, I can spend less money by buying the standard version, going to shock therapy or one of the other vendors out there and having them redo the shocks and I can get the same effect or just as good a ride as you can in the live valve. That's where you're wrong. And the reason why live valve is not to make the suspension super plush and gonna be a perfect ride every time. Live valve, the purpose of live valve is to allow the suspension to adjust on the fly. So when you're going into a corner and you need the suspension to be tight, it can tighten itself. When you're uh, you know, hitting a jump and you need the suspension to tighten up, it can do that itself. Uh, you can run in sport or normal mode and get all those same effects. With the standard one, even if you're having shock therapy or whoever else handle your suspension, you're still gonna have to get out every time and adjust each time for the terrain that you're doing. So if you wanna hit a jump, you have to get out of your car, turn all of your uh, shocks to full firm, and then hit the jump. Then if you wanna get back on the trail and have a more soft ride, you have to get out of your car, go to every shock, turn them to full soft to get your plush ride back. With the Talon Live Valve version, you have the ability for the machine to adjust on the fly. There are only two modes, normal and sport, and uh, so there's not like a huge, or there's not like a, uh, a three setup system or three system setup like you'll have with the Polaris uh, dynamic system, but you get uh, sport and normal mode and it does make a huge difference. Uh, it allows you to, you know, have that soft uh, plush ride when you want it and then allows you to just hit a button and have that nice firm suspension when you need and not just hit a button, but if you hit a G out, it's gonna do the work for you. Uh, all in all, in my opinion, Live Valve, 100% worth it. Glad I went with the Live Valve model. And uh, to me, it is, the juice is definitely worth the squeeze. One thing to note on the Live Valve for the Talon, it's not going to be as plush as you'll be able to get out of a Polaris Dynamics system. 
uh, on either a Turbo S, a uh, regular Turbo Dynamics. I don't know if they still make those, but they used to. Um, and a Pro XP. It's not gonna give you the same amount of plushness for a couple reasons. Uh, the biggest reason why is the shock travel. The shock travel on the Talon X, uh, which is the only four seat live valve version. There is no uh, four seat Talon R. Uh, the Talon X, the travel, just, the travel numbers just aren't the same as they are on the Pro XP or the Turbo S or uh, the regular XP Razor. I'll leave the, um, I'll put the travel numbers right here so you can see the differences between the two. Uh, but it's just not going to be the same. It's not going to be, it doesn't have as much potential as the Polaris systems. For the third thing that I absolutely love about the Honda Talon, and that is confidence. Every time I'm behind the wheel on this rig, I feel confident in what I'm doing. Uh, whether it's rock crawling, hitting trails at speed or pace, uh, going through whoops, stuff like that, I'm confident behind the wheel on this rig. And that is, can be pretty hard to come by anyway. Uh, I think the first time that I hit a moderately difficult rock climbing trail or ro rock crawling trail anyway, at Sand Hollow, uh, the first time I hit one of those, I was a little nervous going into it. By the end of the trail, I knew I could do just about anything there. Uh, and it brought a ton of confidence with it. So uh, I absolutely love the confidence I have in this machine when I'm on the trails, when I'm in the, uh, in the rocks, all that kind of stuff, just super confident in it. I'm also confident, I guess another, in another way, in the reliability of the machine. It's been super reliable for me. I haven't had an issue with it yet. Uh, other than the front axle seal, what I, which I think just about everybody got hit with, I barely lose any fluid at all and I haven't even had it addressed yet. I probably should and, and maybe I will when I get it in for uh, warranty work if that's necessary. A couple honorable mentions for this rig after a year of owning it uh, and a year, over a year of enjoying it with the family. A couple things. Uh, I really prefer the seating arrangement that is in the Honda Talon four seat uh, models. Uh, it gives the kids in the back or whoever's in the back a more uh, raised up and narrow uh, point of view and it allows them to be part of the action more than I found in my Razor or in other four seat rigs that I've had the kids in. Uh, allows them to be part of the action whereas in a lot of the four seaters, the Can-Am X3, um, I think of specifically, and then uh, the Turbo S as well, you sit down low if you're sitting in the back and you're staring right at the seat in front of you. Uh, this uh, rig gets the kids up, uh, gets people in the back up and lets them be part of the action more than you'll find in other rigs. Uh, changing the fluids on these things, it is what it is. There's probably not much they could do to, to change the design. I've done mine three times now, I think three times now. I make just a stinking mess every time. I stuffed so many rags in there. So many, I, I made homemade funnels that made the oil go where it should go, everything else. Every stinking time is just a mess when I change my own oil. I'm the type of guy that does. Most people are. I wish the, the uh, regular maintenance on it was a little easier to do. And the next honorable mention for me is the hill start assist that is in it. Basically, you push a button, it'll hold the brake down for about three seconds until you get back into the action. It allows you to uh, approach hills or get stuck in the middle of an obstacle and be able to hold yourself still and not have that hesitation from taking your foot off the throttle and then putting it on the, uh, or foot off the brake and then putting it on the throttle again. It allows you to take the time necessary to get ready and go and uh, immediately head up rather than having to rock back and then go forward again. So big fan of the hill start assist. Okay guys, what are your thoughts on the Honda Talon live valve four seater or even the non live valve four seater? Uh, share those in the comments below and let me know what you think. Also another thing that I wanna mention, if our uh, videos or the content that we provide you plays a part in your buying decision ever in any video that you see Let us know in the comments below. We would really appreciate that that lets the manufacturers know that you're actually paying attention to what we're saying Which is pretty cool. Also one more thing as well If you live in the Phoenix area or you live in southern Utah st. George Cedar City that area and you want your ride to be featured on one of our videos, then send us an email at info at derangedoffroad.com. You'll find the contact link in the uh, description is below. 
we would like to start doing features on people's machines uh, in areas that we live in. Um, I know I love seeing what people have, other people have done with their rigs, and I'm sure some of you would love to see the same thing. So if you're interested in having your rig featured on one of our videos, then definitely leave, or send us an email. Uh, the contact information is in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. We really appreciate the support. We're working to give you more content like this, at least two videos a week, uh, which is our goal. Sometimes we have a little hard time getting there, especially through COVID. I feel like the manufacturers, they didn't take the time off, but they weren't able to do what they wanted to do through this whole COVID situation. Um, and so it really uh, was hard coming up with content that we felt brought value to you guys. So hopefully we see that going forward. We have a bunch of stuff coming as well. Look out for more Pro XP content as we work on that build. We'll have that down here. Uh, I'll have that down here in Arizona in October. It's in the middle of getting a lot of cool stuff done to it. You'll see in the video after this, some things that we're working on right now and you'll get to watch the progress of that build as uh, it goes. With that said, guys, that's it for this one. I gotta get home before the wife sends out the cavalry because I told her I'd be home in about 30 minutes and if I'm not, she is gonna call somebody to come rescue me. So with that said, ride safe, pack out what you pack in and we'll see you on the next one. I'm just gonna say it, I'll say it. I used to think